Good morning and welcome to the Hope Community Church vlog episode number 11. We've been going through the Lord's Prayer over the last couple of weeks and um, yesterday we reached a really important point. We reached a point where we we're talking about forgiveness. Forgive us our sins, forgive us our debts. We were looking at what that means. But today we're going to see that the phrase doesn't stop there, as I'm sure many of you know. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven others. This is the modifying phrase. Forgive us our debts as to the extent that we forgive others. You see, in the Bible, uh, the way we can expect God to forgive us is linked intrinsically to how we uh, forgive other people, people who do us wrong. In fact, straight after the prayer, he says this uh, in Matthew in Matthew 6. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. This is strong stuff from Jesus. And he tells a story about it a little bit later in Matthew 18, the parable of the unmerciful servant where someone owes the king a phenomenal amount of money, um, 20 years wages, so let's say half a million pounds. And the king forgives him his debt, lets him off his debt. But then that man goes to someone who owes him money, a few months wages, possibly a couple of thousand pounds in today's money, and doesn't forgive him his debt, throws him in prison until the debt is paid. And the king finds out about it, and gets really angry and chucks the man in prison. And Jesus says, that's what will happen to you if you don't forgive others like Jesus has forgiven you, like God has forgiven you. It's really strong, really, really strong. But the point that Jesus is making is this, forgiven people forgive. If you've been forgiven by God and we have gloriously of all our sin, we should forgive other people. But that's not easy, is it? C.S. Lewis said it like this. Everybody thinks forgiveness is a lovely idea until they have someone they need to forgive. Everyone thinks forgiveness is a lovely idea until they have someone they need to forgive. This is a path that Lou and I have been walking the last, last year, couple of years. We thought forgiveness was so easy. And then we have someone that we need to forgive and it's much, much harder, isn't it? And we find it's not as straightforward as perhaps we thought it should be. And we give lots of reasons why we shouldn't forgive someone. They've hurt us too badly. Like God means us to forgive some people, but when someone hurts us this badly, how can we possibly forgive them? And look, forgiveness is not saying that what the person did to you doesn't matter. It's not saying what the person did to you doesn't hurt. It's certainly not saying that you necessarily have to have a restored relationship. And it, what it's not saying is if you've been in an abusive relationship, that you need to have anything to do with that. In fact, we would counsel you, if that's your situation, to run as far from that relationship as you can and tell someone about it. That's not what this is talking about. Forgiveness, R.T. Kendall says in his amazing book, Total Forgiveness. Forgiveness is letting someone off the hook. You see, what we love to do is we love to stand in judgment over somebody. When someone has done something to hurt us, we take the position of judge and we say, what you have done is wrong and I'm going to punish you. Sometimes we punish people through the cold shoulder. Sometimes we punish people by um, saying nasty things about them. Sometimes we punish people by being nasty to them in return. What we're doing is we're standing as judge over them. But we're not the judge nor do we have any right to judge. And what they've done may be horrible, but forgiveness, R.T. Kendall says, is letting them off the hook. Because if we believe that God is who he says he is, then he is the judge. And on the day of judgment, either they will, be, they will pay for what they've done to us, or Jesus will pay on their behalf for what they've done to us. That is justice, it will be done, so we can let them off the hook. How do we know when we've forgiven someone? Well, firstly, uh, R.T. Kendall talks about, um, we know that we've forgiven someone when we pray for them, when we're able to pray blessing for them. 
We know that we've forgiven someone by keeping short accounts. If when they might do something wrong against us, we we go back to all the other stuff they've done us and we we can list off and we can rant and rave about all the stuff they've done wrong, we know we haven't forgiven them. We know that we've um, forgiven them when we're not speaking negatively about them to others, gossiping about them, telling people what they've done to hurt us. We know that we haven't forgiven them. And look, friends, forgiveness is a, an ongoing, long-term process. It will come in waves. It has done for us. We get to a point where we think we've forgiven someone and then something comes up and we realise, oh, maybe we need to do some more work on this. I want to encourage you, if forgiveness is something that you uh, are struggling with or walking through at the moment, to read R.T. Kendall's book, Total Forgiveness. It's fantastic and challenging. It will speak words of hope into your life, but also, I think, words of challenge. And so I want to encourage you to to buy it, to read it. This is important. Forgive us as we forgive others. We talked yesterday about how sin creates a relational barrier between us and God. Unforgiveness does the same. How can we not forgive when God has forgiven us so amazingly? So Heavenly Father, I want to pray you would help us to root out unforgiveness. Wherever we find it, big or small, root out bitterness and replace it with forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen.